Sorry, ค่ะ Welcome to Thai PBS English News Service. Tonight, you with me, r u n g t i p s h o n a p a l a i Various organizations in Ayutthaya Province are preparing for the visit of His Majesty the King Pumipon to the Royal Flood Prevention Project in the t u n g m a k a m y o n g area. Officers from the Provincial Administration Organization of Ayutthaya are helping to clean up the monument of Queen s i s u r i y o t h a i at t u n g m a k a m y o n g in Ban Mai Subdistrict, where the landscaping has been improved along the route of the royal visit. Narong Kong s o m b u n agricultural scholar at Ayutthaya Provincial Administration Organization, said that plants and trees have been changed. Especially frangipani or lila wadi, mahogany, as well as other ornamental plants, because the severe floods last year destroyed most of plants in the area. The monument of Queen s i s u r i y o t h a i also known as t u m a k a m y o n g is a significant historical site marking the area of fighting between Siam or Thailand and Burmese troops during the King Mahajanapat of Ayutthaya period, when Queen s i s u r i y o t h a i brought her elephant to protect her husband and was killed by a s i d e In 1996, His Majesty King Pumipon graciously initiated the royal project to use his own land at t u n g m a k a m y o n g as r e s e r v o i r s for to for uh, for the flood protection. Following the severe flooding last year, the r o j a n a Industrial Park Company in Ayutthaya Province has invested 2 billion baht in building a higher dike surrounded the industrial park. At present, 15 kilometers of the 77 k i l o m e t e r dike construction finished, and the whole project is expected to be completed by July. Local farmers have expressed concern about this project, believing the dike may may cause the water to flood their farm instead. Here's more. 15 kilometers of a 77-kilometer dike construction project around the Rojana Industrial Park in Ayutthaya Province is already complete. The dike is being built higher in an effort to protect all factories in the park from a repeat of last year disastrous flooding. Pitya l e u n g l u y o t General Director of the Rotana Industrial Park Company says that the company has had to borrow the money from the bank to build the dike in order to restore foreign investor confidence, as the government has so far not provided any support. Associate Professor Dr. s e r i s u p a r a t i t Director of the s i r i n t o n International Environmental Park, says the new dike here is very strong and one meter higher than the original wall, which was built in 1995. However, he points out that this dike may cause flood water to spill onto surrounding farmland and into residential areas near the industrial park in state. Uh, now they have uh, constructed uh, the dike, uh, so if all the dikes are finished, uh, it is safe, sure. But other area of Ayutthaya yeah, may, area. may be in flood like yeah, this. Yeah, flood. Yeah, of course. a y u t h a y a have to be flooded, mm-hmm. but smaller flood than last year. Yeah. Uh, last year is about three to four meter, but this year maybe not more than one meter. Mm-hmm. k a l a y a n i j u p r a n g a local villager in Uthai district of Ayutthaya province, says she is certain that the water will flood the local farmland. She is asking the government to pay 12,000 baht per r i g h t in compensation, as the land is useless for farming if a flood comes. The Ayutthaya Municipal Authority says that they have a project to build a dam to prevent the entire city from being flooded, but funding is inadequate as the construction will cost about 2 billion baht. But the province currently only has 20 million baht. The local authority is, however, proceeding with the construction of earth dike along the Japraya River in preparation for a possible flood. Darin Klong Akara, Thai PBS. Thank you, Kun Darin. Today, in an attempt to address the hot issue of the high cost of living, the Agriculture and Cooperatives Ministry launched the Cheap Consumer Goods Festival, or t u k t a n g Pandin. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Ying Lakshinawat insists that the rising living costs will ease within three months. 
after the Prime Minister held discussions with the Permanent Secretary of the Commerce Ministry regarding the high cost of living problem. She instructed that the Commerce Ministry to find the cost and study the actual cost of consumer goods after the government found that the cost of raw materials has already decreased, but decreases have not been passed through the consumer. She also expedited the launch of the Thuk Jai Chops and Thong Fa or the Blue Flag Festival, which are selling low-priced goods aiming to offer another choice to people, adding that the high cost of living problem will start to ease by the third quarter of this year and it will be totally solved by the end of the year. The Central Committee on Goods and Service Prices has proposed that the government fix the price or prepare meals. Bun Song Teriya Pirom, Commerce Minister, says that Prime Minister has already agreed that the Commerce Ministry should prepare a list of preferred prices for prepared meals. He claims that the main cause of the high living cost is operators maintaining excessively high prices. Meanwhile, the Agriculture and Cooperatives Ministry will launch a roadshow selling consumer goods at discounted prices across the country, including at 10 locations in Bangkok, such as JJ Mall, Kha Rum Klao, and Klong Te Community and Education Ministry. The roadshow will be travelled around the country for 10 months. But despite concern over the rising cost of living, the Bank of Thailand or the BOT expresses optimism in the Thai economy and has lifted its GDP growth forecast for 2012 from 5.7 to 6 percent and further projects that the economy will grow by about 5.8 percent in 2013. The central bank reveals that the improvement in the flood ravaged production sector has contributed to a faster than expected economic recovery. As the government faces serious economic challenges, including falling agriculture prices and the rising cost of living, the government believes that their populist policies will provide the solutions. Nevertheless, an academic expert from the Knowledge Network Institute of Thailand warns that although populist policies can help alleviate economic rules in the short run, they actually threaten productivity and long-term growth. Here's more since being elected to office, the Pure Thai-led government has been bombarded by economic challenges. These include price decreases in some agricultural products, such as prawns, and the rising cost of living, partly triggered by increased labor and energy costs. The patching schemes are what the government implements to please farmers when the prices of agricultural products decrease, whereas imposing price control measures is what the government does to help consumers when commodity prices are on an upward trajectory. However, at the end of the day, academic experts caution that productivity and a sustainable economic growth will be jeopardized as populist policies prevail and further distort the free market. At present, the Pure Thai-led government spends an overwhelming portion of the fiscal budget on pledging main crop paddy and cassavas. For example, over 110 billion baht is being spent on the rice pledging scheme, with prices 50 to 70 percent higher than market values. The government claims that these programs help improve the farmer's standard of living. Meanwhile, as the rising cost of living becomes of growing public concern, the Commerce Ministry has intervened by freezing prices. Apart from the prices of 42 goods and services under its control, the ministry introduced the Blue Flag Program and Tuk Jai Shops, both of which sell cheaply priced consumer products. Cooked food has also recently been added to the ministry's price control list. The Commerce Ministry is even seeking cooperation from food center operators to sell cheaper dishes and from consumer goods producers to maintain their prices. Sompon, senior fellow at the Knowledge Network Institute of Thailand, or NEET, says that price control measures can create problems if prolonged. First, the price controlled goods will be eliminated from the market as producers switch to selling other more profitable products. And second, supply will not be able to keep up with the rapidly rising demand of artificially cheap commodities. These commodities may even experience an abrupt spike in price where the government is no longer able to keep the prices frozen.
Sompon also indicated that pledging schemes on agricultural products at prices way above market values are extremely harmful. This is because the unusually high prices of pledged agricultural products, like rice, will wrongly incentivize producers of other crops to switch their production, hence reducing the supplies of non-pledged crops, such as mangoes and vegetables, while jacking up their prices. This will eventually lead to an increase in food prices, which is one of the major factors contributing to the public's concern over the surging cost of living. The senior fellow of NEED insists that populist policies reduce productivity and distort the free market, both of which hamper sustainable economic growth. By supporting farm development through agricultural diversification, modern technology and new seed varieties, the government can help minimize farming costs and keep food prices down thus benefiting both farmers and consumers. This is Bandit Gut Bandit, reporting for Thai PBS. Thank you, Kun Bandit. Moving on to the constitutional amendment, the parliamentary debating regarding this issue is still not over. The House Speaker has set up another meeting on May 14th. Leaders from the government side expect that voting on the issue will now be in early June. While condemning the violence, a representative from the Organization of the Islamic Conference, or the OIC, agrees that the way to solve problems of violence in southern Thailand is to address the root of the problem. Following the visit of OIC representatives Sihasak Pungkek Gao, Permanent Secretary of Ministry of Foreign Affairs, or MFA, together with Syed Qasem Al Masri, Advisor and Special Envoy from the OIC, announced that both agree that the violence in the South is a domestic problem and not due to religious differences or territorial dividers. Siasa points out that Thailand is to work more creatively with the OIC and it is necessary to use emergency acts in three southern provinces to protect the safety and life of the people. Authorities will ease the emergency acts when violence reduces. The government will negotiate with all groups, not with one particular group, because one group cannot represent people from the south as a whole. Meanwhile, El Mastri stated that to live together in peace is to reduce violence. The OIC condemns all violence occurring in the South. And that this should be done within the constitution of the, any, any uh, request or uh, aspiration for, uh, to fulfill the, uh, the or to, to remedy the grievances of, of this community should be Done the OIC representatives also agree that there should be negotiation with all groups involved and he will report the results of this visit to the Secretary General of the OIC. The Supreme Commander of the Karen Tribe Army has permitted the opening of all 12 border crossings along the Thai-Myanmar border in the Morgue Thai village of Popa district. The Thai authorities responsible for national security believe that the action was a result of the increased number of Burmese soldiers deployed in the area. However, Thai locals remain worried about the situation. Both Thai and Burmese locals along Popra and Umphang districts of that province are now free to cross national borders as usual after Major General Nakamoy, Supreme Commander of the Karen Thai Army, uh, ordered the, the opening of all 12 border crossings along the Thai-Myanmar border. The border checkpoints were previously closed as part of the Major General's retaliation against the Thai authorities for adding his name to the government's black list of drug dealers at the end of last month. The closure of the border post prevented the normal flow of labor and wooden products for uh, almost two weeks. Yet most Thais living abroad along the border are not confident about their safety because the tension between Thai and Karen locals grew after the Thai authorities accused Gen Major General Nat Kamoy of drug offenses. Vira Wong Subana Wong, senior permanent secretary of Popa district, however, confirms that the entrances along the border have been opened and, apart from some concerns over safety, the locals' ways of life has returned to near to normal. Nevertheless, he is not sure how long will the entrances will remain open. 
Meanwhile, the Thai authorities responsible for national security say that the opening of the 12 entrances along the border was a result of the increased number of Burmese soldiers deployed in the area. Still, the Thai army along the border continues its stringent security measures. And that wraps up tonight's edition of Thai PBS English News Service. Thank you for watching. Good night. สวัสดีค่ะ